What's up guys, Jordan here from Switchwatch with today's route of Disney classic games Aladdin and the Lion King. First up, since this is a compilation review, we'll be deviating from our usual structure to focus on the package as a whole, rather than reviewing each individual game and looking at our individual segments that we usually do. And secondly, I have practically zero nostalgia for these games, aside from playing the Mega Drive Aladdin at my cousin's house one afternoon when I went for a visit, so I'm seeing if these games are still fun to play today as a primary focus. Right, so, as you have gathered from the title and all the publicity, this is a compilation of two Disney games that were were critically lauded at the time of release. One quite a bit more than the other though. Both The Lion King and Aladdin defied the norm by actually being pretty good licensed tie-in games. This collection includes multiple variants of each game found, with Aladdin having the Mega Drive game, a director's cut version, which includes some fixes and adjustments, a trade show demo, and also the Japanese version. The Lion King includes Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, and a Japanese version of the Mega Drive release. Both games include their black and white Game Boy version, and also the Game Boy Color palette one. It seems like a healthy selection, but really when you whittle it down to what is truly unique, you're looking at just a few games. It's missing a lot of the unique stuff. The biggest omission is the Super Nintendo Aladdin, which was done by Capcom, which obviously would have some complications in terms of rights. But not only that, Amiga, NES, Game Gear, DOS and Master System, all of these releases are not here. So there's actually more missing than is actually included. Sure, there may be rights to think about, questions of quality, manpower available for this release, but even so, I'm all about being definitive with these compilations, and if there are as many omissions as this one, I kind of think it's a missed opportunity. I mean, when is anyone ever gonna get to play the Lion King DOS version at any point. It might be total crap, I have no idea, but I want it to be here so I can find out myself. I want all the crap, just shovel it on me if it means this compilation is complete. Anyways, the games themselves are kind of powered by nostalgia. The Lion King, Mega Drive and Super Nintendo variants are very much identical in terms of gameplay, but visually the Mega Drive version is so much stronger. The game is notoriously tough and takes a lot of patience and practice, uh, once you get to the second stage that is. It doesn't quite hold up by today's standards in terms of playability, but it's the kind of challenge that you refuse to give up on, which is the kind of challenge I personally like. Even if your abilities and the hit detection seems quite off by today's Day standards. It's still a game you want to progress in, even with the harsh lives and continue system which throws you back to the start screen. But forget that because Aladdin is the real star of the show. While it still suffers the same dodgy hit detection and gameplay quirks that wouldn't be acceptable today, like the impossibly obtuse platform edges, it's still a ton of fun to run around, throw apples and awkwardly hack at the enemies. It was always more show than substance back in the day, but that show holds up surprisingly well. Uh, the animation is some of the best the 16-bit era ever produced. The handful of versions available are nice and I'm pretty sure that this is the game you'll be spending the most time with. In terms of playability, fun, presentation and just overall quality, it far outshines the Lion King, so it's unsurprising that Aladdin actually got top billing here. The Game Boy and its Game Boy Color overcoat for both these games are surprisingly faithful representations of the big boy releases. While I didn't play completely through them, I'll freely admit that, they seem to follow beat for beat, level design, enemy placement and so on. Obviously they are far rougher in terms of playability due to seeming input lag which one would assume was prevalent in the original releases. These are here for curiosity's sake more than anything, but I'm more than happy that they are here. That's why I love the Castlevania collection so much. The Game Boy games aren't great, but I just love that they are here to be experienced, because nobody is going to go and buy The Lion King on Game Boy, ever. But I'm just so happy it's here. Oh yes, and by the way, yes, I did feel mild input lag on all these games here, but actually I'm not sure if that was true to the originals. Uh, Game Boy games are notorious for it, and visually intensive games on the Mega Drive and Super Nintendo were also partial to it, so it kind of came with the territory at the time, so I'm not immediately blaming the emulation, but perhaps some tightening up of everything would have been nice. 
In terms of additions to these emulations, well, there's a little bit of stuff going on in terms of aids to the gameplay. I tried using some of the original cheat codes that were supposedly for this game, but I could not get those to work. Maybe I was doing it wrong. But anyways, not to worry, as most of the versions here have some sort of options to turn on invincibility and choose which level you want. Weirdly, you can only do this before you go into the game, not once you've already chosen it. And not all of them have this, strangely. Anyways, one of the most welcome things, something that pretty much every retro compilation needs these days, is the rewind feature. In these games where if you run out of continues, you're sent back to the start screen. A cheeky rewind when faced with the unexpected can ease some of the anguish. These games especially are known for their versions of the Turbo Tunnel from Battletoads, almost kind of like quick time events really, that can be tough and frustrating, but the rewind feature makes them far more bearable. The problem is that once you use it, the floodgates break and you can't stop using it for every single minor little thing. Well, that's what happens to me anyways, and it kind of ruins the experience somewhat, but that's my own damn fault. And just follow my little bit of advice, be cautious before you use it too. Once you start abusing it, you stop responding respecting the game, and playing it means far less to you. Anyways, tangents. One of the cool things this game does, something that Digital Eclipse, the developers here, are known for, is the watching and jumping in feature. Basically, you can watch a playthrough of the game from an expert, and then, at any time, you can take control. It's a brilliant feature that seems almost like magic, and it's great for seeing how the pros do it. And these are not long games by any stretch of the imagination, so you can breeze through the footage easily skipping us to a spot that you want to play. You can save your game at any point and return to it, although it's only one slot per game, which seems a little stingy, but it's useful for getting past those tricky points when you're almost out of lives or continues if you don't want to use the rewind feature. There is button mapping too, thankfully, as some of the default choices here are a little bit weird. In the Super Nintendo version of Lion King, A was jump, which gave me the shivers, so I, I think some of you will be happy to know that button mapping is here. Another thing that Digital Eclipse are great at including is all the little extras in a museum-like presentation. You can listen to the game's soundtracks if you want, hear the 16-bit renditions of the Disney classics, plus there's concept art as well as a plethora of little videos about the development of both games and movie. Some of it is archival, while I think a few were especially made for this release. If not, they were made very recently. Each mini documentary is just like, it's like five or six minutes, but I was enthralled by what I saw. There's other insight too, with almost PowerPoint slides of various aspects of the games with side notes and commentary from the developer explaining what you're looking at, like cut content and how it would have been integrated with the game. I do think these little museum pieces are heavily in favor of Aladdin rather than The Lion King, since that seemed to have less interest stuff overall, mostly just period interviews. But nevertheless, it's all good stuff and it shows the amount of length Digital Eclipse will go to in terms of presenting these games and their history. They did the exact same thing with the SNK collection and I absolutely love what they do. Before we go any further, if you're new here and you've enjoyed this review so far, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. This is not our usual review structure, but I'm sure you'll love what else we come up with. Plus, once we hit 50,000 subscribers, we're giving away a Nintendo Switch Lite and Link's Awakening to one of you, so subscribe! The visual options here are decent. You can have perfect pixel mode, full screen mode, which isn't really what you'd imagine. It just makes the screen touch the bottom rather than being compressed. Plus, you have a horrendous stretch mode if you're a heathen. There is border art for each game, which can be switched off if you want. Plus, there are some interesting filters. You can have a TV filter, LCD filter, and a monitor filter, each of which look very distinct, although I just stuck with the standard one, non-filter, as it seemed to be the least intrusive. This Disney Classic Games collection is priced on the eShop at $29.99 in the US, £31.49 in the UK, and €34.99 in Europe. I'm not sure why Disney decided to gouge the UK and Europe for 30% more money than Americans. Uh, that's already put it in my bad bucks. But anyways, I think the effort gone into making this collection makes the value go up higher than what it otherwise should be. Digital Eclipse do some good stuff, and this is another fine addition to their recent works. It doesn't do much we haven't already seen, but it's working with limited material. The other games should have been here though. The Super Nintendo Aladdin, the Game Gear games, NES games, all of them. Yes, there are rights issues and quality concerns with some of them, but if all of them were present for me, it would have been easily value for money, just down to the effort and commitment to bring a full house. Right now, I'd say it's a bit on the pricey side for such a small amount of variety in the versions, because in reality, you're getting only like five different games 
with others just being like cool little changes or slight variants. And even saying five is kind of pushing it, it's not, it's more like four. But there is a physical version which is retailing a tiny bit cheaper. And if you want to get your hands on the physical and support your favorite Switch reviews at the same time, then consider using our purchase links, which are in the pinned comment and description. Personally, I'd wait for a sale on this one. As a side note, for those going digitally, you're looking at 1.5 gigabytes of storage space on your Switch. Overall, I think this collection is geared more towards the nostalgia crowd. As cool as the games are, they're not the most essential retro titles and have aged only decently rather than superbly. Super Mario World, these are not. But with Mega Drive, Aladdin and a healthy dose of nostalgia for The Lion King, and you've got yourself a decent collection that is excellently put together by Digital Eclipse. Nice bonus material, options and so on. But for me, it really, really needed the other versions of the game to make it a proper package one worthy of a release. You'll still have a good nostalgic time, but I think it needed more. A 7 out of 10, but wait for a sale. Okay guys, if you're looking for some more retro compilations, then perhaps check out our review of the Sega Genesis Collection and SNK Collection. We have reviews of both. Also, this game was featured in this week's All Physicals video, which we tell you all the physical releases coming to the Switch every single week. A must weekly watch for collectors. We'll see you guys over there. Take care.